Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your choice for all things Everton. I am Jerry. I'm joined by Terry. Um, dang it. Got to figure out a cool way to intro that. I mean, it, it rhymes for Christ's sake, Terry. We keep saying this. Anyway, so, <laughs> got to get a third person. This is Schmary. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, this is a Gilfie Sigurdsson, you know, what the hell, man. Uh, I, we buy Gilfie, and I was really, I actually was psyched for it. Um, I thought he could have the impact. Uh, and then his utilization since has been just so, it fluctuates. You never know uh, how he's going to be utilized, even in this system. Um See, you know, he, you see him often as like a second striker in the past, um, which is how he you could get him closer to the goal, get him some more some more attempts. Uh, I guess the big excuse, big complaint about Gilfie, Gilfie back in the day was he didn't get a lot of goals or assists from open play, is what people would say. Um, now, it's just kind of he just goes missing in games, and you just don't know. Where the hell he is? Um, I know this in the Arsenal match I was watching, and I think the play that really stuck out in my mind, I think he had a, uh, on our first goal, right, he played the dead ball, right? He played that ball across, and then when it ricocheted around a little bit, didn't he kind of slap it in and big, huge bounce, like kind of a short hop went really high, and that's when... Isn't that what happened? And then uh, David Luiz like head or shouldered it, and was that and, the uh, was that the second goal? I think was that, that the first or the second. I think it was the second. Am I combining two goals? Yeah, uh, he, he, where he kicks it into the floor and it and it. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the Richarlison goal. He does put the set piece in for the Carlo yeah, Liverpool goal. First, yeah, yeah. It bounces up off a defender who's marking Mina, I think, and then with the loose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was. I mean, it was uh, David Luiz who goes up. And uh, are you, oh, hold on, you're still talking about the other one. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think you have to think you've merged the two goals, but um, I've I've made this bizarre hybrid goal. Yeah, yeah. He um, <laughs> he, he did take the free kick for the for the first goal. Yeah, you are right. So, so technically, he had an impact on both goals in one way or another. He actually did. Yeah. He didn't get the assist on the second one, but he like. <laughs> I don't think did. you can count that because he literally tries to shoot and shoots at the floor and then very luckily it bounces up and Richarlison takes advantage he's, he's or it like, it like I think Mina hits it briefly and then Richarlison hit it yeah. I think it was like so he he got a bizarre like second assist if you even are down for that kind of stuff or if you even count that kind of stuff which I don't really uh, so but I'm struggling I, I'm trying to give him a little bit of credit but I'm struggling to. It's a lot of hair splitting. It's grasping at straws. It's basically saying, you know, okay, so technically he had some impact in the game, you know, but he was lined up on the left. And I think you and I, in the previous video, we were basically talking about how uh, if you've got Iwobi or Bernard, you could line up on the left or Sigurdsson. Which one is a more natural fit at the position? The two former suggestions every time. Sigurdsson doesn't make much sense there. No. Um, I feel like right now the only place he makes sense is at that uh, attacking center mid position. It's the only place he makes sense, and he just goes missing for long periods of time. So what are we going to do with this guy, Terry? Is this, is, is this a uh, he goes out on, out on loan somewhere in the summer, and that's probably he's just going to be out on loan forever? But it seems like Ancelotti kind of likes him. I mean, the best place for him would probably be the bench, but like rather than on the in the middle or the left. But yeah, he's 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 like a shell of his former self, isn't he? And it's not just with the change in formation. He was poor at the beginning of the season when he was number ten in a four-two-three-one mm. under Silva. His goals have completely dried up. His assists have dried up for the most part, and he's a passenger. His legs have gone. He he doesn't contribute hardly anything to the team. There's, there's clips of him again. It's not the first time he's done it either. Of when 
Everton are in possession, and he, instead of showing for the ball when he's in good space, he's pointing away like, "Don't give it to me, give it to someone else." He'll like point at like the centre back when the full back's got it rather than to himself when he's under no pressure. He, I, it's he, he he used to be such a quality you know player, and don't get me wrong, even back in his in his pomp, I don't think he'd have suited an aim a four four two in the position he's playing, but. Now he's just he's he's moving into that territory of you know need, you know high priority to get rid of, and I don't even know if, how we would. He he'll be similar to you know the likes of Schneidlin or even Balassi, who, who the price we paid for them and the wages that are a prohibitive to selling them. I don't. I think he could do a job um, for you know several teams, but not for those wages. They're not going to take that. You know what I mean? So right. Now that Andre Gomez is back and you know, you know, you know, gripping wood, not just touching it, like he stays fit and doesn't get injured again. Yeah, I think Guildfield probably finds himself out the team now. I mean, I, I do hope so. I, I agree with you that Ancelotti seems to have liked him so far, but now that he's got the option of a much better playmaker, a much better footballer, and Gomez might not see as many chances for Guildfield because he has been a ghost for the for so many games this season and. The good thing about the four four two is that you can't really hide because not from not from people's eyes anyway. You can you can see when one player isn't pulling the weights. It's very easy to understand. Whereas when you've got like you know congested midfield areas and they're doing specific jobs, you you know oh, well it's like that at the World Cup. Like no one really understood the job Raheem Sterling was doing for the team because he because he wasn't scoring a lot of goals. You can't say that in a four four two. You every, you know everyone's job. You know you know where they're meant to be and. and Stigerton is just being exposed as being a very slow, very low impact, poor player these days. He's, he's completely changed overnight. He was never like, you know, he was, he was never, uh, you know, get the game by the scruff of the neck type player. But he had quality, you know, quality in his boots. The, you know, the, some of the goals. he wanted the ball. Yeah, he, he used was... to want the ball. He was dynamic. Like he'd get the ball. He wouldn't sit there and go on zigzagging runs. But at the very least, he would sit there and co combine with other players, make a run up, and he'd be dangerous from around the top. Like you saw him take chances. I feel like what you've got now is a player who's gotten very stale in both his attitude toward you know and in playing style. Yeah, well, he's just basically I, I think his time at the club is probably up I think a lot of supporters think that but I, I think from you know the vibe you, you know you, you get from the you know the, the wider noises of the club it is time might be up not not something so obvious as you know oh, they don't like Gilfie Sigurdsson but you saw at the AGM that um, Brands wants two players for each position now in centre mm -hmm. midfield I wouldn't be surprised if they added an extra and had five central midfielders because you're always going to get you know at least one injury in a position like that so so when you look at that and then you, you put two and two together and you realise Ancelotti's probably going to want his own player in there because it's such a key area of the pitch so then we've already got six central midfielders add another one there's seven you need five mm -hmm. two have got to go and I, I think the likely candidates are going to be Sigurdsson and one other, maybe it's Schneidlin, might be Davies out on low, might even be Delft, but for my money, I, I don't think there's any scenario where Sigurdsson is not one of the players who they're trying to shift from that central midfield position to make way for someone else. It's just about whether we can shift him, because yeah. if, would you buy him on the strength of this season where he's contributed nothing, he's not scored many goals, he's not made, not made any impact on stats, and every time he's seen on television, he's awful, like he's not showing for the ball, and it, Gary, I said in the last segment, Gary Neville on, on the TV, the TV coverage in the UK, was giving him a pretty hard time because he doesn't obviously watch every Everton game, and he was must have been looking at him going, "What yeah. the hell is this player doing? He's so disinterested and so lazy looking, and he's been like that all season. He's he's just not been the player yeah. he was." That's the thing I always really used to appreciate. You could see the work he was putting in. You saw work rate. You saw his pressing, the work he was putting in without the ball. He used to be really, really active without the ball, you know, either on, on defense or attack. Um, and you saw someone who you admired the, you admired uh, what he could pull off despite not being the quickest player on the field. You know, he had a bit of craft, a bit of guile to him, and, and his work ethic just supplemented that. 
Um, but, but now, like, without that work ethic, what do you have? Without someone who's willing to take chances on those passes and on those runs, what is going on with him? And I just I feel like it's, it's sort of a, a placeholder. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just someone who's there. Uh, not a lot of spice. It's just something that's just filling a void for the time being. Um, and it's a shame because I, uh, I really liked him when we bought him, and I've liked him for a long time. Hell, is my kids got a got him on the back of a uh, the back of his last kit that he got. You know, um, that was that was his my kid's favorite player. And now it's like we watch, and I'm you know he's like, what's Sigurdsson doing? And I'm like, that's an awesome question, man. That is an awesome question. Where is he? Okay. Um, if if uh, I guess the question is if we were able. I mean, you're looking at either a loan or a sell. Right now, his stock is low. Okay. So it's not the type of situation where we would necessarily want to sell because his stock is so low. But is it going to get lower? That's a question. Is it a situation? Is his recent are his recent days recent enough to warrant us still getting a decent price on him, or do we chance trying to get rid of him and him having a bad season somewhere else and him being worth even less? Because right now people could say, "Oh, it's just not the right fit at Everton. He's still got some good days left. We're still willing to pay this price. It may not be the high price we we would really want." You know what I mean? Like the way the value would work. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. What do you think? I think the best you probably hope for is he gets a loan with a view to buy and he goes to some weaker league where his weak his flaws aren't as, as prevalent and he you know puts a bit of a bit of form, you know, gets some good form together. Then someone might take their option on him and buy him. But um I think his age and his wages are prohibitive for everything. Like, you know, the I'm sure there's plenty of clubs who go, yeah, we'll take a number ten like him, even at that age, but not for a hundred grand a week. That's that's the problem we've got. We've got a lot of players who aren't, you know, you can understand if Richarlison is on a hundred grand a week, another club will go, yeah, we'll pay you more because you're really good and you're going to get better. Whereas if Sigurdsson's on the way down, his best years behind him, the clubs that will benefit from him as a player can't afford that. This is really the peak of Sigurdsson's career now, and he's about to. You start heading downwards. I think if we get Europe, I don't think we'll even entertain selling them. I think you know, I could see a scenario where they keep him for like you know he'll play the Gomez position in in Europe because mm-hmm. he you know it might be a little bit easier for him in Europe because the the pace is slower. It's not as physical. I still wouldn't, but I can see it potentially happening. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's he's just he's cut. It, it, He's a waste of space at the minute. Every time he's on the pitch, he's just invisible. He doesn't contribute to anything. And it's getting to the point now where uh, if it, he's he's gonna, I hope he doesn't play again. I hope we're so. I hope our options now are at the point where we don't need to use him other than coming off the bench. And I'd honestly prefer to see Tom Davies coming off the bench than Sigurdsson at this point. Yeah, especially if his heart's not in it. Because at the very least, with Tom Davis, you know his heart's in it. Yeah. If, if if this was a FIFA football manager type affair, Sigurdsson and Schneidlin for me would be the two. They'd be on the transfer list going, yeah, I've, we've you can't play anymore. We've and it's the two players. Like it's I haven't forgot that disgraceful FA Cup derby exit where those two were the way I mean I don't want to dig into Schneidlin again on this one because this is a Sig- Sigurdsson segment but you know the two of them they're not good enough and Sigurdsson is it's it's more surprising for him because he spent last season nowhere near the, the list of get rid because he was an important player and he was you know the second highest score, goal scorer and or joint first or whatever it was crucial player and overnight he's like on everyone's sell list and there's a reason for that it's the way it's his own doing yeah <sighs> yeah this is one this is one I'm not a huge uh, I don't like saying this stuff because I I feel like there's some there's still something left in the guy I just I I, I get the vibe that maybe he's just not where he wants to be to uh, to be able to actually kind of make that happen mm. um, he doesn't seem like uh, like he's excited to be here anymore, 
And I mean, if that's the case, I mean, he he just doesn't come across the kind of guy though who would let that affect his professionalism. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem like that kind of guy. You know, some people they pout and their head goes down. You know what I mean? And you really don't get much from him ever again. I feel like he's still present. He doesn't seem like him. That's what the whole thing doesn't make sense to me. Like I wonder if there's something else going on, or if it's like you said. Uh, if he's just getting older, I mean, maybe. But I've I've seen before when players have, uh, you know, they 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 either the legs go or they, you know, they've they, they've stayed one season too long or it's just they've lost it. It happened to Sylvan Distan. It happened mm-hmm. to Tim Howard. It's happening to Sigurdsson, I think, where he's just uh, he's gone from had you know double figures goals last season to being one of the weaker members of our midfield. And that's not just with the change of formation, as I said. he's You could explain it away if he'd just gone poor recently because he's not the type of player who plays in a, a, a 4-4-2. But he was poor all season before that when he was playing as a number 10, his preferred position. He was even worse than I'd even, I could even say. Um, yeah, I just I think his, his time's up at the club. It's not as easy as that, obviously, and can't always get rid of these players, but I don't think you know he's going to be anyone would miss him if he went in the summer. Mm. Oh man, well, not a huge fan of these kind of seg- segments where we I feel like we're being like super negative um, in terms of uh, outlook. Because um, frankly, I would be super happy if he kicks in gear and all of a sudden he's back to being the guilty cigarettes and I I want him to be, and I'd be curious. Uh, like what would what it would take for for something like that to happen, or if this is something, because because uh, I I watched this weekend's match this morning, which explains why I got kind of discombobulated over uh, over the goals, because I watched it all this morning and I've rammed my whole work work day into one big thing, um, and, and I didn't watch it just to watch Sigurdsson. You know what I mean? I watched it to watch as much as I could. And I'd be curious to see, to watch just him. You know, because I don't watch every game just to watch Sigurdsson. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to keep my eyes not just on the ball, because that's a big part of the game, is away from the ball. If you just watch the ball, then let's be honest, you're missing a huge part of the game, huge part of the match. Um, but uh, I'd be curious to watch a match and just keep an eye on him. To see what's actually happening. Because I would like to be fair. I do want to be fair. But, I don't know. It could be we are being fair. So, anyway. Okay, anything else on this, man? No, I mean, there is, there is a way back. Like, he, he's... He, the way he plays at home in, in the home match against Chelsea, if he could do more of that, he didn't even score or anything like that. It was just his efforts and his commitment. If he could play like that, no one would have a problem with him. He's still a quality footballer. But you're just not seeing it from. So they, he's not, you know, a no hoper type player. There is a way back for him, but it just doesn't look like likely at the minute. Yeah, in the past he's shown some flexibility to be able to play in different types of formations. We talked off camera about how, or off mic, <laughs> uh, off recording, uh, about him, you know, playing some on the wing for Spurs. And I know in other segments when we've discussed this, I know we've had people say that he's played uh, in a 4-3-3 before for Iceland. Uh, he's shown that kind of flexibility in the past with other teams. Um, so it just, again, it just makes me wonder what is what is lacking from the situation or if it's just going on with him, either body or mentally, or just, I mean, he just may not be happy. That affects a lot. So... Anyway, okay. Well, I guess that's it for our Gilfy Sigurdsson. What's going on, man? Hey, what happened? Uh, we we don't really we don't really know. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, if you're taking videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. So you can catch Terry lurking on the Liverpool Echo fan jury uh, every once in a while. Check out his Twitter. He'll let you know when and where that's going to happen. And uh, and also he's. He's also open for, for uh, affection. Hugs abound for Terry, uh, or at least they should, and you're all missing out.
Just saying. So that's it. Um, uh, you can pop on over to the podcast if you like. We have a lightning round going on. Terry will be asking me 10 questions. I will ask him 10 questions. Will they be interesting? Will they? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. At least be funny a little bit. I don't know. So uh, anyway, lightning round is usually, usually a good time. So pop on over there if you want. Uh, I guess that's it for the for the videos then, Terry. I'll talk to you in just a little bit on the pod. All right, bud? See you, mate. All right. And for everybody else out there, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.